Hello and thank you for watching our training video on administrative distance and routing decisions presented by RouteHub. For the next few minutes we're going to talk about the administrative distance rule and talk about some other decisions of routing that can occur. So two routes, two routing protocols. So let's say for example that we have our network that is configured for two different routing protocols such as OSPF and EIGRP. So let's say that, that we have a route such as 10.100.0 that is learned from two different routing protocols such as OSPF and EIGRP. The question is which routing protocol would inject that route into the global routing table and when I say global routing table, this is what the router is looking at to make its decisions on getting to point B. Well, the answer is it uses the administrative distance or the AD for short. So the lowest administrative distance from two or more of the routing protocols that has learned the route would win and would inject the route into the routing table. So in our particular case, from our example, we had OSPF and we had EIGRP. So then the question is, well, what is considered as the lowest administrative distance between these two? So this is pretty much a list of all the administrative distances for some of the more relevant uh, routing protocols. And there actually are more here as well. Um, so for example, we see that static routes has an administrative distance of one. EIGRP has 90, OSPF has 110. And this is um, information you can get from any one in your textbooks for CC and A, NP, IE, any networking book will um, reflect these numbers of doing so. So in our particular example that we were talking about between OSPF and EIGRP, here in this particular case, we know that EIGRP has a has an administrative distance of 90 and OSPF has an administrative distance of 110. Therefore, EIGRP would win because it has the lower administrative distance and that will be injected into the routing table. So routing decisions. So this is something that uh, is a concept that is not really kind of fully grasped. A lot of people focus very heavily on administrative distances of a routing protocol. But routing decisions are mainly done by looking at the route that has the longest prefix length. And we'll talk about that shortly. If there are multiple um, routes with the same prefix length, then it will determine using the administrative distance rule. So let's use an example to understand this fully. Let's say, for example, we have host 8. So host 8 wants to communicate with 10.10.100.10. And that host A's default gateway router, its routing table may look something like this. It's learning a EIGRP, which is indicated with a D, for 10.10.0.0 slash 16 and routing that out of Ethernet 1. And it can also learn it via OSPF, via 10.10.100.0 slash 24 via Ethernet 2. Now the question is, which entry will be chosen for routing to that destination network? The answer for that is going to use the OSPF route, which was the 10.10.100.0/24, because it has the longest prefix length that is uh, compared to the EIGRP route. Let's go back for a second that is pretty much is more generic it's more like a summary whereas like a 10.10.0.0 slash 16 that's more like a summary so a 10 10 100 is a closer match and it will use that route for routing to point b so that is pretty much gives you a kind of quick overview of, of explaining what administrative distances are and one particular rule for how decisions are done for routing you can get more information on training for configuring, routing, and switching located at routehub.com training. Thank you for watching.